Hi, I'm Coach Amber, and welcome to the Meet RX Success Story Podcast. Today, we have a special guest with us, Erin, and she's going to talk about her success with a meat-based diet. Hi, Erin. Hi. I hope you're doing well today. I am. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, so Erin, tell us, what was your life like before you started a meat-based diet? Were you having any health issues? What kind of diet were you following? Any information you want to tell us about your life prior to starting the carnivore diet? Okay, well, I have to go back pretty far. <laughs> um, so way back in 1998, I was diagnosed with endometriosis. And uh, so I was, I was pretty young at the time, and uh, the doctor's solution to that was to put me on continuous birth control pills, and that was all they offered to me for that problem. So I started uh, at a pretty young age taking birth control continuously, and then that went on for uh, about a decade's time. Um, so that was kind of the first time I had any kind of a health problem, if you will. And then later um, in 2009, I was diagnosed with celiac disease. So at that point, I, I knew I had to cut out all gluten and that did um, help a lot initially, but then I kind of started running into some problems. <laughs> um, I had a lot of uh, brain fog, and my mood was uh, very unstable. I felt like I was always on a roller coaster of up and down with my moods. Um, and, and honestly, I just thought I was a dramatic person. I just thought that's how I was, that's, that's normal for me. Um, and I studied musical theater and opera and that kind of stuff, so I just thought that was part of the gig, you know, I'm dramatic. But um, I found out later that that wasn't the case. Um, I also had a lot of uh, lethargy. I felt like I couldn't get enough energy during the day, and I always needed a pick-me-up at around 3 or 4 o'clock, um, and usually that was sugar, you know. And I was also a uh, vegetarian for about 3 or 4 years, and uh, I believe now that that uh, caused some issues with nutrient deficiencies and, and just uh, feeling kind of blah, like I can never get enough get up and go to do things. Um, so yeah, so I had the mood swings, I had the tiredness, I had, you know, the celiac going on. Um, I also had um, eczema um, and not just like in an, in an unseen place, but eczema on my face, on my hands, um, all sorts of, of places where you don't want eczema. <laughs> and it would get so itchy that it would crack and it would bleed sometimes. And if you think about all the times you use your hands throughout the day, and even now in this corona world where we're washing them constantly, <laughs> um, and, and to have like cracked bleeding hands is just, it's just the worst because you use them all day long and it's like a constant reminder that something is not right in the body. Um, so, you know, various things having to do with inflammation, the eczema being a big one. Um, I also had massive hypoglycemia. So like I was talking before, I had, I had that dip in the day where I needed sugar. Um, I kind of felt like that all the time, really. So I would eat breakfast and then an hour later I'd be starving again and then I'd have a snack, but then I'd be starving again. And I'm like, I'm eating oatmeal, isn't that filling? <laughs> but no. <laughs> um, so anyway, oh, and I also had a lot of uh, UTIs. I kept getting them again and again. And now I can put the pieces together, but at the time it just seemed like all these random things that didn't, make sense to me. I'm like, well, why do I always have this? And why am I prone to this? And then later, you know, the picture kind of came together for me. Um, I also was a massive carb addict. Um, if there was a bread basket at the restaurant, like I wanted to just eat that. I didn't care about the entree. I'm like, I just want the bread. <laughs> In college, I lived on bagels and cereal. Um, and now I realize that was probably really unwise. But it was just all I wanted. I was just basically an addict. I just felt like I needed more of carbs and I was always hungry. So I would always fill that hunger with more carbs, not realizing that my body really needed nutrients. Um, 
Another thing I had was um, very low productivity. And you wouldn't know it because I'm efficient, <laughs> so I'm able to look like I'm getting a lot of stuff done, but really now I can tell I really wasn't at my peak performance at all. Um, so yeah, so there was that piece too. So after I got diagnosed with celiac in 2009, I did switch to a gluten-free diet and that did help a little bit. But then um, I got pregnant and in 2010 I had my son, he's now 10, and he <laughs> somehow through my, through my breast milk, we found out that he was allergic to things that I was eating and then transferring to him. So he had horrible eczema all over his little body and he would, he would scratch in the night and he'd wake up with blood streaming down his cheek. It was just awful, it was horrible. And um, so I went to the pediatrician and she said, well, you can start, you know, taking out gluten. I said, well, I already have that and, and dairy and soy out of your diet and see if he improves. She's like, but a lot of people will not want to do that because it's way too restrictive and hard. So you can just put him on formula. And I said, no, I am not putting him on formula. I will make any dietary restrictions that you think I need to make. So of course I'm breastfeeding and, and Googling recipes without soy, without dairy, without gluten, you know, and then I came across paleo. <laughs> and so that was a great find because I needed things and a way of eating that I could follow so I could continue breastfeeding my son, which I did and he completely healed and I was able to breastfeed up to two years, uh, both of my kids that way. So that was a real blessing. And then of course, once I got on the paleo bandwagon, um, most of my symptoms lessened, definitely. It definitely helped, um, but not completely. And definitely not the mental clarity piece, definitely not the eczema piece. And I still had the UTIs and I still had um, just a little bit of kind of like a mood swing at times. It was not nearly as bad as when I was on the SAD diet, but it was definitely noticeable um, when I switched to paleo. So that continued for a while and I was, I was pretty happy doing that. Um, and then <laughs> um, I found out about the autoimmune paleo diet. And I said to myself, well, I do have at least two autoimmune conditions that I know of, well, three if you count the eczema. Um, so I figured, well, this is worth a shot. Maybe this will finally cure everything and I'll be completely healed. So I went six months on very strict AIP and once again, it helped a little bit, but it didn't completely heal me. And I was still so frustrated because that is also very restrictive and you have to be so careful with what's in this and what's in that. And you know, you can have this, but you can't have that or this and this amount. And, and so that was, that was really, really hard. The one thing I will say that I liked about AIP was um, it addressed a lot of lifestyle issues. So it really helped me to work on lowering stress and using exercise as a tool and not a punishment, which I think I had done before. So I do love those things about it. And every, every piece along the way in the journey, there's been great things that I've learned from each of these ways of eating, um, but it didn't heal me. <laughs> so then um, I tried the GAPS uh, protocol and once again, some help, but just not all the way. And so I actually, I became a nutritional therapist through the NTA um, about two years ago. And because, you know, I, I loved everything that I was learning along the way with my paleo and AIP and GAPS, and, and I really do believe in whole food nutrition. And for some people, that is enough. Like you can get there just with those things. And I thought, I, I prayed I was one of those people, but I wasn't. <laughs> And so then after becoming an NTP and working with clients, I was realizing from myself and from helping them, you can do all the right things and you can sleep well and you can be low stress and you can be exercising well and you can be eating a beautiful whole, whole foods diet, but you can still have issues and not be fully healed. And so then, um, and I don't really quite remember who I first heard about carnivore from. I feel like it was maybe 
Michaela Peterson or um, Kelly Hogan or something came across my way. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting? Because, you know, I use elimination diets with my clients all the time. And I thought, well, it's just another elimination in, in a way. And you're taking out all these things and all you have is the most nutrient dense food left. So I figured, you know, that is worth a shot. I'd always done nose to tail. I'd always been into the organs and all that stuff. So I knew without a doubt as a nutritionist that there were enough nutrients in meat and organs for me to be okay. Like I knew I wouldn't get scurvy. I knew I wouldn't be missing the fruits and vegetables so much to have adverse effects. And so at first it was just an experiment. Like, is this the thing that's going <laughs> to finally help? And you know what? Um, this sounds really awful, but <laughs> it got worse. Like my eczema symptoms and some, other my, some of my other symptoms actually worsened. And, but I had committed to at least 90 days because I know from working with clients, 30 is not enough. 60 really isn't enough. You have to give it a good three months to really kind of turn around internally. And especially when you're talking about autoimmune and gut issues, because it's just not enough time for the body to be like, oh, now we're doing this. Let's get on board and let's, you know, react. So I knew, I'm like, no matter what happens, I don't care what kind of things happen, I'm going to stick to it for 90 days. <laughs> and, and, you know, when my eczema started getting worse, I was like, oh, really? But I have to say, at around the four-month mark, it just disappeared. It just, poof, it was, it was gone. It completely healed. My hands are completely healed. It left my face completely. It was just... I, I don't know what else to say except four months for me was that was that time where everything just seemed to click into place and I realized my mood has never been so even like it just it doesn't seem to matter what stress comes my way what happens to me what my kids do what my husband says I'm like eh. <laughs> and I've never ever been like that ever in my life I've always been you know and so that was such a gift and to be so clear all the time, like to be able to think things through and not be foggy is just, it's amazing. And then of course, for me, you know, vainly the eczema thing was kind of like the cherry on the top that I just really wanted to, to deal with. And I will say I did have to do a bit of tweaking in the histamine area because I realized I'm quite sensitive to histamine. So for me doing like, daily bone broth and liver was actually more of a hindrance than a help, but I had to kind of find that out along the way. Um, but overall, uh, carnivore was a complete success when I got to that, you know, 90 days and beyond, for sure. But I will say, you know, you have to be really strong mentally to stick to that and to stick to your guns, especially when everyone around you is saying, you're getting worse, why are you on this? Are you crazy? Like, you know, you should throw in the towel like two months ago. Like, why are you still doing this? Why are you torturing yourself? But it was worth it. And I can now say happily, <laughs> it was so worth it. And I'm so glad that, that other people, you know, shared their stories and inspired me. And on those down days where I felt like I couldn't keep going, I would, you know, listen to Meet Our Ex podcast, or I would listen to Cone Forecast, or one of those to um, inspire me. And so I know that it does help and it does um, help keep you going when you're in those dark days. I'm sorry. I feel like I got really off track. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good. No, it's perfect. That was, that's awesome. I, I'm still kind of stuck on the whole thing where you were talking about your, your, to your doctor about your issues with, with breast milk. And they're like, oh, it's too hard for you to cut out all that. So just put them on formula. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. That just... Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when you um, started merging into a meat-based diet, give us an idea of what you were eating. How did you uh, implement it? Uh, how did you approach it? Did, did you do any intermittent fasting? Did you include, well, you had already um, not included uh, dairy, but was there anything special that you did? And did you have any transitional issues? Yeah, so I would say I, I started with like a heavy meat keto. 
because I had read a lot about, um, well, frankly, explosive diarrhea, <laughs> and I was afraid. <laughs> so I thought I'd try to ease, ease in a little more. Um, but that went really, really well. Um, I maybe did that for just a couple weeks. And then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to ditch the plants. So, um, so mine consisted of, in the beginning, uh, ground beef, steaks of all kinds. Um, we have a farm here, so we're pretty lucky to have fresh beef right outside. Um, some pork, a little bit of chicken. Um, I did do like the grass-fed butter. Um, um, I'm pretty sure, oh, and I did include eggs initially. But within the first couple of weeks, I realized that eggs were giving me major issues, so I cut those out. Um, and then I did not respond well to chicken or pork. So I just went basically just beef, salt, water, and coffee, <laughs> and butter. That was my, you know, experimental 90-day kind of foods. Yeah, so that's... And then transition-wise, um, I felt extreme, extremely lethargic. But I was kind of prepared for that. It was kind of like, you know, the low-carb flu that they tell you to expect. So I wasn't really perturbed by that because I knew it was coming. And so I just tried to really stay on top of electrolytes um, with the Redmond's Real Salt and Water. Um, and I just kind of, I think the mental piece is big because you have to kind of realize transition is hard. It's not meant to be like just start eating meat and everything falls into place. That is not the case. So you kind of have to just mentally prepare yourself. This is going to be a long slog, and it's okay. It's meant to be. And I think that really helped me get through it. Awesome. Okay, so you talked a lot about of the benefits. You kind of went into some of your improvements. But was there anything that you didn't mention? And what was the most shocking thing to you that you were not expecting? <laughs> um, honestly, I think the thing I wasn't expecting was how I feel mentally. Um, because I, you know, I've read online all of the, you know, the weight loss stuff and, um, you know, autoimmune stuff and, um, you know, just feeling generally better. But until you experience that mental clarity, there's just, I mean, there's no way to describe it really other than to experience it. And I just feel, um, free basically, uh, cause I don't have to constantly think about, what's the next meal going to be? You know, what am I going to put with this and that? And, and what can I have at this restaurant? When it's just meat, it's so simple and easy. And I love that. And I'm an abstainer. So I don't get bored eating the same thing, meal after meal after meal. Like, it's weird, but I get a sick kind of pleasure from that because <laughs> it's so easy and simple. Um, so call me crazy, but I think it fits my personality and the way I am. Um, and it fits my addictive nature. Yeah. Oh, I 100% I agree with you. <laughs> I totally get that. And I love what you said about the freedom. Yes. That, that is so incredibly awesome. So, yay. Oh, anything else you wanted to talk about as far as improvements? Um, I just wanted to say that um, I think it's really ironic that, that when you restrict down so much, um, it almost, it gives you, well, it gives you freedom, like I said, but it, it, it gave me a richness to my life that I didn't have before because now I can focus on everything else in life, if that makes sense. Like, those things have become so much richer and, and uh, more important because I can spend all of my energy on that because I'm not spending any energy on worrying about food and my conditions all the time. And that is, has just been so freeing and I feel like my life has more color, which is interesting because my food looks so boring, but, <laughs> but the rest of my life is, is beautiful, so. I love that, love it, love it, love it. That is awesome. I, I'm so glad you, you said it that way. And the thing is, I don't think people fully can understand that till they experience experience it. They look at you and they say, oh, well, it's so restrictive. It must be boring. It must be this and that. That's not the case. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, Erin, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. <clears throat> and you have a wonderful day. You too. Bye, Erin. Bye.
Bye.